Hi everyone, it's Krista and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome and if you're not new, hi again. So this is my channel. I love to do all types of DIYs. I also love to do Dollar Tree DIYs. I love to make wreaths and I also love to do thrift flips. So if you like what you see here, you know what to do. Hit that red subscribe button. I would love to have you. Also leave me a comment. I love to hear what you guys think and give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Pinterest. And I also have a wreath shop. It's called Chris's Wreath Designs. It is an Etsy shop. I will have that link down below as well. And today is all about sweet summer days with my friends, Rustic and Lace, Crafty Hints, and Six Kids and a Glue Gun. And there will be a playlist. So stay tuned for that. So first, we're going to start out with DIY number one. So it's all about sweet summer days. So what's sweeter than bees and honey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bumblebee. So I'm using this paper. I'm using that oval piece that you saw there. That oval piece I did get from Walmart and two little egg wooden pieces and um, two heart wooden pieces and those paints that you just saw. So the first paint I'm using is white paint by Waverly. It's chalk paint and I'm going to paint these two hearts with that color first. Um, I did um, paint these on front and back just because that's me, but you don't have to. And then I went along the edges with the steel um, color chalk paint by Waverly as well. This paint, um, this steel color is a really cool grayish color and it gives great definition to any of your projects and that's what I was trying to do with the wings of the bumblebee so I just wanted to do a really light dry brush on those in around the edges and then the two eggs I am going to and these are from Easter you guys I am going to paint with my black chalk paint in ink by Waverly and I can I uh, paint those front and back as well and we are going to be covering these but i just want to have full coverage make sure you can't see none of that wood showing on the edges so i just paint all of my wooden pieces completely and that's up to entirely up to you if you don't want to do that you could skip that part but i did so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to trace out the oval piece with this striped um bumblebee uh, craft paper that i have and this scrapbook paper i've had for years it's by photo play um and that's i got it years ago i don't even know if it's still available but you can use any you know um craft paper that you think would go good with your bumblebee and what i did is i put on a big glop of mod podge and i'm going to spread that out with my little sponge brush and i'm going to then place down my um scrapbook paper on top and I'm going to smooth it out to make sure that there's no bubbles or anything and this paper is really thick this scrapbooking paper so um, it was really nice and smooth so I did not have to worry about that next I traced out the eggs with the polka dotted um, scrapbooking paper and I used my sponge to uh, smooth out my um, Mod Podge and now I'm going to smooth that paper down on top of those egg shapes and after that so we're going to start building our little guy together here so I had one of these um you get these pipe cleaners at Hobby Lobby or any craft store really and um they look like little bug antennas to me so that's what I'm using for my antennas so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to put the egg upside down okay now you could do this with circle rounds too you don't have to use eggs but I did, that's what I had, so that's what I used. I faced one where the round part was up more for the face, for the head of the bumblebee, and then the other part, the pointier part at the bottom for the end of the bumblebee, okay? And I just glued those on both sides, like so. And then I'm going to glue on my wings. And I really liked that I did a dry brush with that steel paint on the hearts because I think that it really brought out the wings a little a lot better than them just being white. And now I'm going to glue those on. And then next, I'm gonna show you how I glued on the antenna. So all I'm gonna do is bend the antenna in half, this pipe cleaner in half, and then I'm gonna glue it to the back. And I'm gonna use a piece of felt to hold it down 
to secure it so it doesn't fall off. So just a little square piece of black felt and I glued that on to hold it down. And then I'm just going to kind of like make them look like antennas. So instead of having them straight up, I kind of curved them over. And that's it, you guys. There is the bumblebee. I think he came out so cute. You guys got to let me know what you think, though, down in the comments below. Now on to DIY number two. So this one is also bumblebee. So that's the theme here. And I got one of these last year at the end of summer uh, at Joann's. And it's just a little wooden box that you could put flowers in and I'm going to put fake flowers in mine and it's just a little bumblebee box and it's made you know out of a diamond shape and I thought this would be really cute so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to use my um, chalk paint in antique wax by Waverly uh, it's not it's antique wax sorry not chalk paint and I am going to uh, use my brush and just brush this all over the whole thing and I did go a little bit on the inside as well, just in case you could see it, um, if the flowers weren't covering most of it. And then I'm just going to wipe it with my um, paper towel to get most of that wax off. And once I rub it all and get it all nice and dry, it just gives you this beautiful wood finish. I love it. The stain is so easy to work with and it doesn't smell. And next, I'm going to go in with this color paint by Folk Art. It is called Goldenrod, and it's a really pretty um, yellow color, and I like the golden color to it. So I'm using that in a small brush to paint my bumblebee on the front. So I'm just going over that. I thought this would be the easiest way was to just let the antique wax go on top and then paint over it and I only had to do two coats of this paint so and it's um it's acrylic paint so and then I went and I used my little sander and I just started sanding everything just to give it that distressed look because that's what I like most of my home decor is that and then I don't know what happened to the footage guys I'm really sorry but I clipped a lot of flowers from the Dollar Tree that I had and some more sunflowers and they were just yellow flowers, wildflowers, and now I'm going to put in some of this um, also greenery from Walmart that I get all the time. I forget the name of it, though. I think it's boxwood. And I just um, put in some, you know, floral foam, and I just tucked them all in there. And there it is, you guys. And here is your close-up. I think this turned out so adorable. I love it. I have it hanging out in my front entryway. Now on to DIY number three. This one, I am going to take some of this goldenrod paint again. Ignore the markers. I don't end up using them except the black one. I end up using this octagon, um, hexagon, sorry. Oh my God. Hexagon um, little frame that you get at the Dollar Tree. And then this hexagon wooden piece I got um, at the end of the year last year, again, from Joann's. Everything was like 80% off, so I snagged what I could get. So that's what you guys got to do, because think about the following year. That's what you always got to think about. And I just painted the whole thing with that goldenrod color by Folk Art. And then what I did is I'm going to take the black marker, which is my graffiti marker, which I absolutely love these paint markers. And... Um, I just went in and I traced out the um, bumblebee that's on the front of it. And it was just easier to use a marker than trying to go in with paint in a, you know, I don't have a steady hand. So this was much easier for me. So I just outlined the whole thing and then colored it in with the um, paint marker and it worked out perfectly. And I outlined the... Um, Every, the whole body, the wings, everything. And then I left some of the parts of the body part, I left yellow that I already painted. And then the other parts I made just black because the bumblebee is black with the white stripes. I mean, black with the yellow stripes. And um, yeah, and that's all I did for this. So this was super, super simple. And once, you know, I got to that thin part of the body, I used a Sharpie, which works great also. Um, if you don't have paint markers, you can use a Sharpie. It works fine. 
And then I came in with my um, antique wax and I just used one of my little chippy brushes and I am just going to go around the edges with a little dry brush to give this a little bit of a rustic look. And then I'm gonna go over the sides and all over the top with a light dry brushing. So it looks a little aged and antique and just stressed. And then I decided with those flowers that were on those wooden flowers that I would use better looking flowers. So I used these flowers from the Dollar Tree that they actually had out last year in the fall. And these are sunflowers and I used those to uh, glue down in the areas. And then these little leaves that I had from a package that I got from Hobby Lobby where you get the fake flowers at. And I just um, bought a package of those uh, got years ago when I was scrapbooking. So, but you could still find them, they do have them. And then I used one of these different flowers that I had in my stash. And I just glued those down instead. And I think that just gave it an extra dimension to it and made it pop a little bit better. And I love that. And I love the green with the um, leaves. And now this is a really easy frame. <laughs> you just undo the back with those little hooks and you lift it out. And then I'm gonna use this scrapbooking paper that I also got from Hobby Lobby. It looks like wood. And I am going to just trace that out. And then I'm gonna cut it. And that is going to be our background for our frame. Really, really simple and easy DIY this was. And it turned out super cute and I love it. And then I just used my glue stick this time instead of Mod Podge. You can go with a glue stick, you know, if you don't like Mod Podge. Glue sticks work just as fine. And um, yeah, and then I just glued it down and it stayed just fine. No bubbles, worked out perfect. And then I just stuck it back in my frame and put those little clips over it to keep it closed. And then this does have glass on top, but I'm okay with that. And I am just going to put this little piece of, um, these come in like bunches at the Dollar Tree. You get a whole packet of like all these different papers. And I just used one of them that I had that was yellow and it's really soft paper. And I just put it to the back of it so it would go nice and it wouldn't scratch the um, actual um, glass. And then I'm just gonna glue it down with my hot glue. And this helps it adhere better too to your glass than the wood adhering to the glass with a glue stick. So I thought this worked out, I mean, with the glue gone. So this worked out really well. And that's it, you guys. And now it stands up. Isn't it cute? I absolutely love it. You guys, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you go check out everyone. The playlist will be down below. Check out all the hosts and the co-hosts down below as well. And I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, remember, stay crafty. Bye.